Hi, everybody. David Wesley here, and I'm in my studio with my brand new floor, my brand new floor trim, and it feels nice. And this is not because I had some sudden urge to redecorate. This is the culmination of many, many months of wrangling with an insurance company and multiple contractors to repair, replace um, damage that had happened back in February. And it feels like it's almost winter again. The days are getting short and finally things are getting back to normal. So that means that I'm not tearing out floors, moving tons of furniture from A to B. Um, I've set aside my drill and, and other tools for a little bit, though I'm sure my wife will find other work for me to do. Um, so I have a little more time and brain power to focus on things that matter, like my YouTube channel. Um, a couple of months ago, I put out a survey on my various social media channels about what kind of content, um, additional content, people would want to have for me. Uh, the reason for that is that my most popular content, the Evolution Medleys, and then second most popular uh, content, the Virtual Acquires, they're all pretty time consuming, especially the Virtual Acquires. The, uh, the Medleys involve a lot of research. The writing process is pretty uh, laborious trying to string together 25 songs in an in intelligible and musically pleasant way is, is not easy. And the, the recording process and post-production is pretty lengthy as well. Virtual choirs are just a whole other level of time consuming. Everything from uh, choosing a song, writing the arrangement, preparing all the practice and recording resources for the choir, uh, that baked in waiting period for um, from launch to deadline, waiting for our singers to send in their stuff and the post-production going through all the hundreds of submissions and editing together the audio and video. It really takes a while. But even the uh, regular kind of plain vanilla acapella videos I do with six or seven or eight of me, uh, they can be pretty time consuming as well. Um, but particularly the, the writing arranging process. And maybe I'm just a little too hard on myself because I I want to outdo myself and, and not fall into a bit of a, a creative rut with those. Um, but the end result of all that is that you're only hearing from me once a month, sometimes less. So uh, in the survey asking about what kind of additional content people wanted, there were a few options. Um, a couple of them, one was like a podcast or just talking videos where I would do behind the scenes um, tutorials, um, talking about issues in worship ministry, theological, administrative, musical, uh, things like that. Um, but the option that won out was actually just more, more music, but particularly um, more kind of live, unfiltered music from me. And, um, you know, to be fair, that is how my YouTube channel started way back in, in 2010 before I discovered a multi-tracking. And I'll be honest with you, it's a little intimidating, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The, the first is that um, I'm not a virtuoso performer by any stretch of the imagination. I see myself more as a worship leader, and um, the stakes are a lot lower um, in the context of especially uh, small, smaller churches. They're a little more forgiving. Um, and even as a worship leader, I've been kind of out of practice during during COVID. It's only in the last few months where I've had the opportunity to be a guest uh, worship leader in other churches, at camps, at conferences, that I've re really realized what I've been missing out on and able to work out some of the, the rust that's got uh, into my voice and into my fingers. Uh, so there's that. And the other thing is that Every day on Instagram and YouTube, I'm consuming music and, and videos from other people, people that have more talent in their pinky fingers than I have in my entire body. Um, so it's intimidating. I know there are people in my audience and people in my virtual choir that can do this better than I can. Uh, so who am I to, you know, to create videos and um, of just me in front of a piano and accept expect that people will watch them. Um, well, we will certainly find out. <laughs> so my, my plan is to do um, songs and sometimes portions of songs just in front of the uh, camera. I can leave my recording set up here because there's not going to be anything, no contractors knocking on the door, ripping things out. 
Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to kind of practicing in front of you, really. Um, it'll be songs that done in the way that I might if I was leading worship with the congregation, uh, without all the trappings of drums and other instruments, um, just sort of raw. So it'll be a little bit different. I feel a little inti intimidated, but I'm going to do it anyway. But uh, if you haven't checked out my most recent Evolution video, Evolution of 1980s Worship, I highly recommend that you do. Um, from the comments that I've received on it, um, it really has been quite a nostalgic ride through, um, some, for some people, childhood, teenage years, young adulthood. Uh, many people uh, mention how they came to Christ during sort of the, the peak of the 80s uh, worship songwriters, and um, it was really special for them. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. And um, if you're interested in supporting the creation of live session videos like this, or uh, the more time consuming content like the virtual choirs, so you can head to patreon.com slash David Wesley. And I will see you next time.